alternating current motors function based upon the principle of having polarities within a rotating magnetic field. Inside an AC motor are housed stationary electromagnetic coils or stators positioned around a movable magnet called a rotor. This illustration of a two-phase motor has a pair of stators connected to one sinusoidal AC input, referred to as phase 1, and a pair of stators connected to a second sinusoidal AC input, referred to as phase 2. The two sinusoidal waves are 90 degrees out of phase. This phase discrepancy is the key to creating rotation of the rotor. Let's follow the amount of current applied to the phase 1 and phase 2 stators at various time intervals along with their respective sine waves. The 90 degree offset between the two sine waves causes the polarity of the stator pairs to change in a coordinated fashion to smoothly turn the magnetic rotor. At time zero, phase one produces maximum vertical magnetic flux and the rotor aligns itself vertically with the stator poles. Because phase two provides no current flow to the stators, there is no horizontal pole on the rotor. At time one, phase one and phase two have equal amounts of current flow which creates a flux between the adjacent poles. This flux causes the rotor to turn 45 degrees to the left. At time two, Phase 1 reaches zero current flow, while Phase 2 reaches maximum current flow. This causes the rotor to turn 45 degrees counterclockwise to align itself with the horizontal poles. At time 3, Phase 2 has diminished current flow, while current flow through the vertical rotor coils increases and reverses direction. This causes the rotor to move another 45 degrees to the left. As the two sine waves continue to induce current 90 degrees out of phase, the rotor will spin and the motor will run, effectively transforming electrical into mechanical energy. In a three-phase motor more commonly used in modern applications, the alternating current inputs are displaced in time by 120 degrees rather than the 90 degrees of displacement found in the operation of a two-phase motor. This block diagram illustration depicts a typical three-phase AC variable speed drive system. It has three main components, an operator control, a drive controller, and an AC motor. An operator control device provides a means to start and stop the motor and adjust the operating speed. The drive controller consists of a variety of components that work together to convert an AC input into a frequency and voltage output necessary to change the speed of an AC motor. Let's look more closely at the components of the drive controller. The converter or rectifier component consists of an array of fast-acting switches that convert an incoming AC voltage to a pulsating DC voltage. The intermediate circuit acts as a filter and consists of a DC bus and associated circuitry. This stage of the wave conversion serves to stabilize and smooth the pulsating rectifier output to generate a constant DC voltage. 
The filtered DC bus voltage then passes through to the inverter. At the inverter, an array of fast-acting switches convert the DC bus voltage into pulses at a constant magnitude that are proportional to the DC bus voltage. In a typical three-phase frequency inverter, there are six switches, with the pair of switches for each phase. In each pair of switches, one switch generates the up component of the sine wave and the other generates the down component. The inverter output is not a true sine wave, but an approximation based on the application of pulse width modulation, or PWM. The longer a switch is on, the higher the AC output voltage. Conversely, the longer a switch is off, the lower the output voltage. This duration of on time for each pulse is called pulse width. The time duration and intervals of these DC voltage pulses determine the synthesized AC output voltage and frequency. In a three-phase driver, the sine waves produced by each pair of inverter switches are 120 degrees out of phase to ensure efficient operation of the motor.